What's up everyone, Noah here, from 840 Movie Caps. I'm about to take you on a great adventure. Yes, the North Pole. Yes, there will be spoilers, but I assure you the trip will be worth it. The story begins in Greenland, somewhere around 1900. Jorgensen needs help after an extremely difficult journey. The legs don't look good at all, they're frostbite. His friends are trying to save him, and what follows is not pleasant at all. The action moves to the year 1909, at Christmas. A toast to Denmark expedition is being held. They found a diary and a map to land still untouched by human foot. Captain Edgner Mikkelsen decides to make a new, far more distant journey. His wish is that the land of the north should not be demanded by the Americans. Jorgensen can't participate anymore, which is why the captain needs a volunteer. They all seem to be wailing. They don't trust the captain's decision. Their opinion is that this journey is pure madness, resembling a road between Moscow and Rome, looking for the needle in a haystack. No one seems determined to go on the expedition, with one exception. Iverson is volunteering, and the captain will consider the proposal, with no other showing interest, but Iverson seems rather clumsy. He gets a tough first lesson, he doesn't have to befriend dogs because he will have to kill them when they become useless. Iver tries to impress the captain to go on the journey. The others are not. Jorgensen does not believe that a mechanic is suitable for the expedition. He doesn't agree with the trip either. The captain decides to leave with Iverson. Day 1, March 1910. Iver and Captain Mickelson are on their way. Everything around them is frozen. The landscapes are impressive. The first hop comes. The two are trying to climb a frozen hill. They need a lot of skill and physical strength, but they succeed in the end. Iver seems to be distracted by the environment, while the captain wants him more focused. Day 26, the road is long and complicated. Dogs do their best. Conditions are extreme. In an evening chat, Iver wants to find out the captain's opinion about the Denmark expedition. The captain had a friend on that team, an explorer who disappeared. Only one body out of three people was found. That's how they found the diary and the map. At sunrise, the captain teaches Iver a secret to catch speed much easier, freezing the sleigh blade slightly. Their dogs become agitated and run faster because they feel something nearby. Iver can't control them anymore. He loses control of both dogs and sledges. Bjorn, Iver's favorite dog, is in danger, hanging in a precipice. Iver can't get to him. Though willing to risk his life, Iver fails to save Bjorn and is visibly affected. As a result of this accident, Iver also lost some of their travel supplies. The two explorers manage to cross the frozen area and discover new realms. Day 48, Iver is curious to know what the captain's motivation is. Why he keeps doing what he does. Iver is excited about the opportunity. But Edgner is set against the Americans, who consider Greenland to be different from Denmark. This is the chance for a sensational discovery. The landscapes they encounter are sensational. The two continue to advance on their expedition. They reach again an area with extreme temperatures. There is no food for dogs, there is no sign of life around them. They are faced with tough decisions. Even the captain is tired. Day 84, analyzing the map, the captain believes he must change direction. Iver would like to quit, not sure they will be able to complete the expedition. But Edgner believes defeat is not a solution. Edgner sees the sign in the explorer's diary and finds signs of a camp. The captain finds a message confirming their opinions. The American explorers failed, the proof is the message left by the captain's friend, a member of the Denmark expedition. The morale of the two is changing. The captain thinks it's time to go home. Day 132, the two are back in areas of extreme temperature, the dogs begin to give up. The two explorers continue their difficult decisions. After a check, they decide to eat the liver of a dog dead of fatigue. They feel bad about it. Iver takes his rifle and goes looking for something to eat. Before he catches anything, he is distracted by a gunshot from their camp. The captain is attacked by a polar bear. Iver shoots the bear, but the captain falls with the bear into the frozen waters. Iver manages to pull the captain to the surface, saving his life. The morale of the two is extremely low, with no supplies and no dogs to help them advance much faster. Iver recounts what his social life was like before he went on the expedition. Iver wakes up from his sleep and finds the captain setting the sleigh on fire. He says that, with 200 more miles to the ship, they must give up everything that slowed them down. Day 164, the two walk, without dogs, sledge and with a minimum of supplies. The road is difficult, but the landscape is unbelievable. Edgner checks the map and looks with despair. He takes the decision to leave evidence of well-preserved discoveries if they do not survive. Iver is extremely tired, the road seems endless. But Edgner pulls Iver after him. 
Eventually, the two arrive at the Alabama boat, but they can't find what they hoped for. Their ship is destroyed. Their colleagues built a hut from parts of the ship, but apparently they left the area. After returning to the country, they want to convince politicians to pay an expedition to save the two left behind. The minister does not want to finance a new expedition, being convinced that after the people of Denmark expedition died, Iver and Edgner are also dead. Day 242, Iver and Edgner are in the hut built by their colleagues. Although Iver is demoralized, Edgner believes someone will come and save them. He is waiting for the ship that will save them, which is late to appear. Iver begins to have all kinds of visions, hopes for any kind of rescue. Edgner tells his childhood memories and how his life was saved. To make time pass by easier, they repair a tape recorder and listen to music. Edgner remembers his time with his girlfriend, but now they are alone and the situation does not seem to change. Edgner has a nightmare and believes that a polar bear will destroy their hideout and the evidence of their epical discovery. He wakes Iver up and tells him he has to go back to retrieve the diary and the evidence. The two are back on the road, although Iver does not agree with the decision. Discussing dreams, Edgner fears that there is truth in what he dreamed. Day 439, the two arrive at the hiding place, and Edgner finds the journal and the evidence. He breathed relief. It seems that a bear actually attacked the hideout and what Edgner dreamed really happened. The two explorers head back to the hut. On the way, they find the Denmark expedition car, a crossley. Day 471, Iver and Edgner manage to return to the hut, but it seems that someone has come to the hut in their absence. They even left a message, in July 1911, in search of Edgner Mikkelsen, because they did not find them, their compatriots left the hut for the second time. Iver is disappointed, he enters into a conflict with Edgner, who did not want to listen to him when they left for the second time on the road. They didn't leave any notes, which is why everybody consider them dead now. Edgner loses his temper after realizing the bad decision. Back in the country, the minister is still uninterested in Mikkelsen. Jorgensen is trying to convince the minister that Edgner definitely has the evidence and the diary and that a new rescue expedition is needed. If they give up Edgner, they practically give up Greenland. Meanwhile, Iver and Edgner continue to survive in the hut, having what they need, but only for a while. Edgner seems to be losing the Christmas strings away from home. Their conversations are getting weirder and weirder, but Iver still hopes they will be saved. Day 793, after a walk in the area, Iver finds the captain lost and confused. It is becoming more and more sad. In a moment of madness, he climbs on what is left of the Alabama vessel and sees in the distance what appears to be a balloon. He hopes it's not a delusion. From the balloon comes a woman, Naja, the captain's lover. Everything is a mirage, and Edgner is awakened to reality by Iver. In the evening, Iver finds the captain increasingly distracted and absent. Iver hopes there is still a possibility that a ship will come to rescue them and decides to go into recon. Edgner continues to be disillusioned. Iver is starting to have mirages too. The two begin to talk about ghosts. Iver says he saw his grandfather while he was in recon, represented by a ghost. The discussion takes on dramatic aspects. Each of the two lives in their own dreams. Edgner is filled with remorse for the decisions he made. He seems to blame himself for Iver. He seems convinced that no one will come to save them. Iver finds the captain dancing alone and is convinced that he has lost his mind. The captain is getting more and more difficult. He wants Iver to use the knife and help him with a medical problem, and then he passes out. Waking up again, Edgner thinks Naja cheated on him with Iver and decides to kill him. In a moment of madness, he attacks Iver. The captain puts his hand on the gun and makes the decision to fire at Naja, managing to remove the mirage. Iver escapes with his life and decides to keep the gun away from the captain. The two are almost out of food and ammunition when they hear noises outside the hut. Iver's trying to check it out, and sees a polar bear. They try to make it go away by making a lot of noise. The captain decides to go to retrieve the weapon. Day 865, the two hear noises outside again. They only have one bullet left. But when they come out, they discover that it was not the bear, but people who came to rescue them. The minister is announced that Edgner Mickelson has been rescued. The two are receiving an extraordinary welcome. They will be rewarded for their discoveries. The United States is obliged to recognize that Peary Island is not an island, but a part of Greenland. An extraordinary victory for the Danes. Edgner sees a woman, apparently there's not a mirage this time. This is Naja home, which apparently wasn't just a dream. In the applause of an entire room, the two receive the gratitude they were seeking. Edgner and Naja finally get married a year later, and Iver decides to never travel to Antarctica again. The two remain friends for life, 
Now that you got your spoilers right, go watch the full movie to find the missing parts. Thank you for watching the video.